boys and girls, it's Miss Carol, and we're in 2021. I'm so excited. I hope all of you are doing well, and I'm going to be going over your lesson with you this week, and we are on lesson two. Last week, Pastor Jeremy did lesson one, and this week I'm going to be doing lesson two with you. So our scripture comes from the book of Matthew. Do you remember where Matthew is in the Bible? Let's, I'll give you a minute. Oh, you're right. It's the first book in the New Testament. So we're going to be, I'm going to be reading um, from Matthew. Actually, it's going to be Matthew 13, verse 2 through 17. So if you want to run and gra grab your Bibles, that would be wonderful. Or if mom and dad are with you and they can open their Bible, you can read along with me. So I'll give you a second to get your Bibles. I hope you're doing well. Um, I'm, I'm going to talk to you a little bit before we start, so if you're running to get your Bible, you have time to do it. Maybe you can hear me as you're going to get it. But my thought is, maybe when mom and dad, um, when your parents are maybe on Facebook Live on Sunday morning, when they're on watching Pastor Jeremy and the praise team on Facebook Live, this is a wonderful opportunity for you to come to the Google Classroom, listen to your lesson, and we can do your scripture, and you can learn your Bible verse while they're on Facebook Live looking and listening to Sunday's worship. It's kind of like being in Sunday school together. So just a thought for maybe the next time uh, to open up your lesson for the week on Sunday morning when we're in worship at 10 o'clock. So right now I'm going to read Matthew 13, verses 2 through 17. This week's theme, boys and girls, is listening to God. So let's see what Matthew 2 through 17 has to say. Such large crowds gathered around him that he got into the boat and sat in it, while all the people stood on the shore. Then he told them many things in parables, saying, A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places, where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched, and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on good soil, where it produced a crop, a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. Whoever has ears, let them hear. The disciples came to him and asked, Why do you speak to people in parables? And he replied, Because the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of heaven has been given to you, but not to them. Whoever has will be given more, and they will have abundance. Whoever does not have, even what they have will be taken from them. This is why I speak to them in parables. Though seeing, they do not see. Though hearing, they do not hear or understand. In them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah. You will be ever hearing, but never understanding. You will be ever seeing, but never perceive, perceiving. For these people's heart has become calloused. They hardly hear with their ears, and they have closed their eyes. Otherwise, they might see with their eyes, hear with their ears, understand with their hearts, and turn, I would heal them. But blessed are your eyes because they see, and your ears because they hear. For truly, I tell you, many prophets and righteous people long to see what you see, but did not see it and to hear what you hear, but did not hear it. That was our scripture for tonight, boys and girls. 
And our lesson is listening to God. Have you ever been around someone who speaks a different language than you? Maybe you know someone that speaks Spanish or Italian or Greek? Maybe your parents speak a, another language other than English. What happens when we try to have a conversation with someone who doesn't speak the same language as us? You're right. We can't understand them. Just like when someone is speaking a different language. When we rebel against God. Remember that word rebel? Pastor Jeremy mentioned it last week in lesson number one about rebelling. When you don't want to do something that you were supposed to do. Maybe your parents had said, um, I need you to clean your room or I want you to clean your room and you say, I don't want to. I, I just don't want to do it. I'm not doing it. That's rebelling. And sometimes people rebel against God as well. So let's see what else we can find out today. When we rebel against God, when we stop listening to him and stop following his commands, we often find that it seems like God is speaking a foreign language too. We hear the words to us, but either one, ooh, we choose not to listen to his words, or two, we reject what he has said to us in his word. Let me give you an example. Imagine for a moment that God said to you, eating your vegetables will help you live a long life. Now imagine that you don't like vegetables. So instead of listening to God, you put your fingers in your ears every time he starts speaking about vegetables. Sure, you can still hear something. You know that God is trying to say something to you, but you don't want to hear what he has to say. So you simply stop listening. In our world today, there are a lot of people who feel this way about the Bible. They feel that the things God has said in the Bible are sort of like vegetables. They don't taste good. Some people, hopefully like you and I, hear God's word and we trust it. We know it is true and we know it is right. We know God's word is very good for us. But not everyone has the same response. Some people don't trust God's word. Some people don't believe in the Bible or anything that God has said. Some people hear the words of the Bible and think it is false. The Bible tells us that every human being actually has the same problem. None of us naturally understand everything God has said to us. No matter how much we love and trust God, there are things that God has said to us that we just don't understand. The difference between those who believe and trust God and those who don't is this. Believers accept all of God's word and trust everything everything he has said, even when his words are difficult to understand. How can believers do this? Only with God's help. God alone gives us hearts with, with which trust and accept every word God says to us, even the, wor even the words, even the ones we struggle to understand. Well, boys and girls, we do need to listen to God, don't we? We need to open our ears and listen. 
We don't want to put our fingers in our ears and say, I don't want to hear. No, we want to listen to every word that God says. And as believers, we believe and trust in all that God says. So boys and girls, I hope you enjoyed your week this week. I hope you liked our lesson today. Listening to God last week was responsibility. We have wonderful lessons for you, and I hope that you like tuning in every week. I feel like I'm on TV with you. Um, I hope you like our lessons and our scriptures, and I hope you're working on your Bible verses. Last week, two students, right after worship on Sunday, sent me an email or a text and said, I did my verse and they did their video. And of course they get rewarded for that. And you will as well. So take a minute during the week and memorize your verse. And don't forget to send it to me, a video of you saying it, and you will be rewarded as well. As always, God loves you very much. I miss seeing you you all. And I hope that I will be seeing you all soon. But in the meantime, remember what I always say to you. Blessings to you all. Until the next time, bye boys and girls.